Action News at 10 with Ann Galloway. Sports with Eric DeBerardinas. And meteorologist Joe Garbache. Governor of Pennsylvania was sworn in today in Harrisburg, and WYLN was there and has details on what the new governor had to say, plus interviews with some local state senators, and tonight it's our top story. Good evening, this is WYLN's edition, Greater Hazleton's only local news broadcast for Tuesday, January 20th, 2015. I'm Ann Gamley. Pennsylvania has a new governor, Governor Tom Wolf, took the oath of office and got to work right away as the 47th governor. WYLN LNZ reporter Gary Perna and chief videographer Mike Lula were in Harrisburg today and have a recap of the day's events. Today, Tom Wolf took the oath of office to become Pennsylvania's 47th governor. Wolf, a Democrat, beat incumbent Tom Corbett in the November general election. In front of his family, friends, cabinet heads, and distinguished guests, along with the entire state watching, Wolf pledged to uphold the Constitution. I, Thomas Westerman Wolf. I, Thomas Westerman Wolf. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support, obey, and defend. That I will support, obey, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of this Commonwealth. And the Constitution of this Commonwealth. Wolf started his speech by thanking Governor Tom Corbett. I want to start by thanking Governor Tom Corbett for his many years of service to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Please join me. The new governor made it very clear that both parties must work together. Republicans hold the majority in both the House and the Senate. We cannot take lightly the great history of democracy of which we are a part and encouraging, as he said that, all members of the legislature to meet with people across the aisle. That's important. Senators John Gordner and Dave Argel agree with that statement. Uh, well, so far, uh, Governor Wolf has said what he's needed to say. Yeah, he's attempted very hard to reach out to both the House leadership and the Senate leadership. Uh, he wanted them to sit together in a bipartisan way. We, we did that on the Senate side and on the House side. Uh, he talked during the speech about working together. Uh, one of the things that I uh, noticed, he said, was that uh, all ideas should be considered. Mm -hmm. And I think that's always important. So while the governor has his ideas, we will have ours as well. And as long as all of them are considered, uh, hopefully it will be productive. It's going to be an interesting challenge. We have more Republicans in the House and Senate than in any time in, I think, more than 50 years, so more than my lifetime. And so uh, we need to work with the new governor. He needs to work with us. And so it's, a, it's an interesting dilemma, if you will, but I'm hopeful that we can, we can find a way to work together. Senator John Udichik believes now more than ever bipartisanship measures must be taken. Uh, we do have divided government. Uh, Republicans control the General Assembly. The governor controls, uh, the, the Democrats control uh, the governor's mansion. That means we have to work together. That's the most important message I heard today. Bipartisan in nature, bipartisan policy, build consensus, forge compromise, and invest in children, invest in education, invest in new jobs. Uh, so I'm very proud to be part of this day. In Wolf's speech, he told the public that he will be an unconventional governor, and it is time for Pennsylvania to work together and to make Pennsylvanians proud of this state. Remember who we are. Like you, I have been proud to be many things in my life. But above all, I'm proud to be a Pennsylvanian. Proud I was born here, proud I was raised here, proud that I call this state my home. And that's why I want to restore the belief that Pennsylvania is not just another place, not just another state. Pennsylvania is something bigger, it is something much better. It's an idea. Pennsylvania is an idea that all things are possible. It's that idea that brought William Penn here and allowed him to establish a colony built on a foundation unique in the world at that time of tolerance and inclusion. Governor Wolf laid out three primary goals. But I want you to know that for the next four years, my administration will be dedicated to three simple things. First, jobs that pay. Second, schools that teach. And third, a government that works. 
After the speeches, WYLN spoke with some that were in attendance and asked them their thoughts on the speech. I thought it was great. I think he kicked on the points he talked about in the election, and I just hope he uh, follows through with it. I thought it was a great speech. He was short. It was to the point. He laid it out, and now he's just got to follow through. I thought he was terrific. Well, I, I think that uh, Governor Wolf sp spoke from the heart. He uh, wasn't a fancy uh, speech, wasn't a fist-pounding speech, but he talked about the future of Pennsylvania, his commitment to making this a better place, not just for the wealthy, uh, the educated, for everyone. He wants to give everyone, as he said, a fair chance, an equal chance from, from every uh, part of the state, every ethnic and, and uh, uh, racial and sexual group. So I'm, I'm encouraged because what we need to do here in Pennsylvania right now is to bring people together. We've been uh, torn apart uh, through partisanship, in some cases geographic uh, differences, and I think he's going to bring us together. Pennsylvania's 47th governor was sworn in today here on the steps of the Capitol. Governor Wolf said three priorities for his next four years. One, being schooling. Two, being jobs. And the third, a government that works for the people. Today, Wolf said all three will go into play today, and he will take those three and make sure that they go well into his four years. In Harrisburg, at the Capitol, for W. Island's Lead Edition, I'm Gary Perna. Thank you, Gary. In other news today, an early morning fire in one part of Schuylkill County has been ruled accidental. Firefighters in Monroe City say the second alarm fire began around 3.30 Tuesday morning, according to firefighters. The homeowner woke up to his smoke alarms. Neighbors rescued the man from his roof. The home received significant smoke, fire, and water damage as a result of that fire. Pennsylvania State Police Fire Marshal John Burns says the fire began in the rear of the home in the kitchen pantry and ruled the fire accidental in nature as a result of an electrical issue. One firefighter received minor injuries but did not seek medical attention. No other injuries were reported in this early morning fire in Monterey City. A Monoy City man was held up by Knife Point last night in Monoy City. Police responded to Main Street in the borough where a male victim was robbed of $42 in cash. Shortly afterwards, 22-year-old Corey Wall of Monoy City was taken into custody. He was charged with robbery, terroristic threats, aggravated assault, theft, receiving stolen property, and possessing an instrument of crime. Kelly Kazmarczyk was also arrested after the incident. She was charged with hindering apprehension, obstruction of law, and possession of drug paraphernalia. A four-car accident on 17th and Church Streets in Hazleton caused some delays for many drivers. Hazleton City Police, along with the fire department, were on scene this afternoon around 3 o'clock when the accident occurred. There was only one person injured. However, the extent of those injuries were not provided at the scene. Police arrested the driver of the Chevy Avalanche for suspicion of driving under the influence of a controlled substance. All four cars were towed from the scene. Firefighters directed traffic as the police conducted interviews. The portion of Church Street, which was closed, opened up roughly one hour after the accident. An item that was not on the agenda at tonight's Hazleton City Council meeting made major waves. Our Gary Perna was at tonight's meeting and has more. Council members on authority boards was a major discussion at tonight's Hazleton City Council meeting. Members from the audience that included a past council member and a past water authority member questioned council members on why they appointed fellow council members to sit on those boards. I think uh, the two appointments to those boards were great appointments. I think they'll do well. I think they care about the city. Uh, we did not... You know, we had nothing to do with uh, changing the third class city code allowing council people to be on boards. Uh, I'm not totally 100% for it anyway, but if, if councilmen want to be on the boards, I know there's, you know, there's a lot of work there. I know I, I have enough to handle on council, but I know Dave is dedicated. He went to the meetings. He cares about the, the water authority. You know, he's had 10 years of experience, and it's good to have people there with 10 years of experience. Also at the meeting tonight, Council President Jack Mundy mentioned that tomorrow he and Mayor Joe Yanuzzi will head to Harrisburg to meet with a judge to talk about the Illegal Immigration Relief Act litigation. I'm going to Harrisburg to, uh, to uh, uh, it's a conference with uh, the magistrate, a federal magistrate, a mediator, to talk about uh, a settlement with the 
immigration. Okay. And you and the mayor going down to the city? I think it's me and the mayor. I don't know if Bob's going along. I was going to ask him. It'd be nice to have an attorney there, but uh, so far me and the mayor are going down to Harrisburg, and it'll be uh, Chris Kobach's. We're picking Chris Kobach up at the airport. He's our solicitor who, who, who worked on the illegal immigration. He's the secretary of the state for Kansas and he was our lead attorney. You know, they want they want their attorney's fees uh, paid and uh, we, we haven't been awarded, the judge hasn't awarded any money to them, but it's a possibility that that could happen. At the meeting, council voted on its schedule for 2015. Their meetings will be held the first and third Tuesday of the month. The next meeting will be held February 3rd, beginning at 7 p.m. In Hazleton, for WYL Inslate Edition, I'm Gary Perna. Thank you, Gary. A Wilkes-Barre man was hit by a car while riding his bike along Cole Street. The accident happened around 8.30 p.m. on Monday evening in front of the Sherman Hills apartment complex. Police said that the man was hit by a dark-colored Pontiac, which then fled the scene. The victim was checked by emergency responders, then released. The hit-and-run is currently under investigation. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Wilkes-Barre Police Department at 570-208-4207. On Monday, Misty Mashinchak of Park Avenue in Wilkesbury is, was accused of coaxing her husband Gary Mashinchak into raping a 15-year-old girl because she was unable to have a child. Now she on Monday pled guilty to sex charges in Luzerne County Court. 33-year-old Mashinchak pled guilty to charges of rape, aggravated indecent assault, endangering welfare of children, simple assault, corruption of minors, and criminal conspiracy charges. Luzerne County Judge David Lupus presided over the case. Misty's husband, 29-year-old Gary Mashinchak says his wife guilted him into repeatedly raping the child in an attempt to impregnate her so the couple could adopt the child and raise the baby as their own. Gary pleaded no contest to similar charges. He also pleaded no contest to indecent assault of a person under the age of 13 in connection with molesting the 15-year-old's 12-year-old sister, something he said he alleged something he allegedly said he would do if the 15-year-old did not comply. Misty will now have to register for life as a sex offender. Gary is currently awaiting sentencing. The son of a Luzerne County Magisterial District Judge has waived his right to a preliminary hearing. 25-year-old Derek Cronauer, son of Judge Richard Cronauer, was arrested for DUI on December 29th. He crashed his black Dodge sedan into the back of another car in the area of 61 Marlboro Avenue in Wilkesbury shortly after 5 a.m. He was transported to the Wilkesbury Police Station where he had a blood alcohol content of nearly three times the legal limit. He was charged with one count each of DUI. The case the case was originally filed at Judge Cronauer's office, but transferred to District Judge Joseph Carmody because of the conflict of interest. Derek is scheduled for a formal arraignment on April 9th. Wilkes-Barre police released a photo on their Facebook page of a man they say has allegedly been using stolen credit cards. Police say this man in the picture was, has allegedly attempted to use the stolen credit cards at multiple businesses in the Wilkes-Barre area. No word on the names of those businesses where he attempted to use the cards. Anyone with information on these incidents or if you can identify the suspect in the photo, you are asked to call Detective Roberts at 570-208-4228. Police in Wilkes-Barre are also on the lookout for this alleged thief. According to police, the woman in this picture was involved in a retail theft. No word from police as to which business fell victim to that theft. Anyone with information or if you can identify this woman, you are asked to contact Officer LeBar at 570-208-6727 or you can call on the Wilkes-Barre Police Department's Facebook page. They are asking anyone who may have information on a crime or this particular incident to also contact them at wbcrimeline.com or private message them on Facebook. All information will be kept confidential. A Jenkins Township man has received over $40,000 in checks from Luzerne County for services rendered in the double homicide trial of Hugo Zelensky. But 53-year-old Bernard K. Brown is not an attorney. His wife Bonnie said that he received a check in July for over $3,000. He did masonry work at the courthouse, so they assumed that's what the money was for. They also received a check this month 
in the amount of $36,826. After reviewing the check, they realized that it was supposed to go to Bernard J. Brown, who was appointed by Luzerne County Judge Fred Parentoni to defend Zelensky after another attorney was pulled from the case for witness tampering. The county's budget and finance director said that he was not aware of the situation and is looking into it. This year marks the 37th annual Fun Fest, and the committee plans to kick off the season in style. As we reported to you last night, newly elected chairpersons were named for 2015. Kathy Kutchie from Carmen's Bakery in Delhi and Pastor Jim DeRamos from Apostolic Faith Church will spearhead this year's event. We spoke with Kutchie this evening, and she told us about the upcoming fundraiser. I'm here as part of the Fun Fest committee and I wanted to talk about our Fun Fest kickoff and that's going to be March 8th at Janetti's at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and we're featuring the poets again, that great band. Uh, we are looking forward to having a wonderful party there. Tickets are $15 in advance, $20 at the door and uh, come bring the family. We're going to dance, we're going to eat, we're going to sing, we're going to have a good time so I hope you're able to join us. It's the Fun Fest kickoff March 8th at Genetti's. The Downtown Fest Festival takes place in September and draws crowds of people from Hazleton and the surrounding areas. To find out more about Fun Fest, you can visit hazeltonchamber.org. Love birds listen up. Couples who would like to tie the knot in the city of Hazleton on Friday, February 13th can do so by heading downtown. Mayor Joe Yanuzzi will be performing wedding ceremonies as part of the event scheduled for second Friday. The nuptials will take place in the lobby of the Haven Tower at the Marker Building between 4 and 7 p.m. Couples wanting to either marry for the first time or renew their vows will need to have their marriage licenses prior to the ceremony. Couples must call 570 Seven zero four five nine four nine one zero and book their appointment with City Hall before February 9th. The Pines and other downtown restaurants will also have many specials being offered. And that is a look at tonight's top stories. Coming up tonight in sports, Eric DiBerardinas is in with highlights from tonight's local high school basketball matchups. But first, let's head outside to the Bedrock Gardens Weather Center with Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbacek. He may have details on what you can expect weather-wise tomorrow morning, and I hear that it may be snow. Yeah, your hearing is correct, Dan. We are going to be looking at some snow coming into our area as we progress through uh, tomorrow and as we head into tomorrow evening. And here in our area south of Interstate 80 today, we actually saw some uh, light snow and some snow showers, just enough to uh, whiten up the ground a little bit. And there you can see uh, over the past uh, six hours, a little bit of that blue showing up, indicating a little bit of that snow, primarily uh, south of Interstate 80. If further north you go, say up through uh, Nanticoke and up through Wilkesbury, really no snow at all, but further south you go, just a little bit to remind us that we're still officially in winter. Well, we're definitely going to be noticing we're in winter as we head into tomorrow as some more snow will come into our area. I'll let you know how much we can expect coming up next. The Marriott Fairfield Inn and Suites of Hazleton awaits you. Our Fairfield Inn provides you with just the travel experience you're looking for. Meeting room space, jacuzzi suites, indoor pool, whirlpool, and dry sauna. The Residence Inn is perfect for temporary housing in the greater Hazleton area. An all-suite property with evening reception, sport court, fire pit, and outdoor grill area. At the Hampton Inn, enjoy our on-site lounge and restaurant, outdoor pool with spacious deck, and spectacular valley views, and a hot breakfast daily. Whichever property you choose, you can be certain of clean, modern facilities, friendly staff, and impeccable service. Why should you choose Penn State Hazleton? We have new scholarship money. There's no application fee. When you visit campus. Opportunities to do research. Students are scoring internships all over the country. You can start here and finish here. Or at another Penn State campus. We have fun. We have the Lion. Penn State is ranked number one by corporate recruiters. We have the largest alumni network in the world. It's your time. Penn State. Penn State lives here. Check us out at psu.edu slash visit Hazleton. Us this week on Let's Talk Chiropractic, we'll meet Steve Bruno. He's a bus driver, a winemaker, makes his own pasta too, and has found the perfect chiropractor in Dr. Don and Dr. Stacy. His story this week on Let's Talk Chiropractic, James. Hey 
kids. I'm home. Dad, it's cold in here. Oh, it's not cold in here. It's warm in here. Matter of fact, I'm going to turn this down because i got to save money for tax preparation. On Staves, your tax partner, giving free advice year-round. 310 South Church Street in Hazleton. Call them at 570-861-8297. Don't stress, pay less. If you haven't found the perfect fishing getaway, you haven't been to Captain's Cove. Located on Henderson Harbor in upstate New York, Captain's Cove offers a variety of accommodations to please just about anyone. The motel, also located on the harbor, offers a magnificent view. Enjoy free morning coffee, air-conditioned rooms, cable TV, and HBO. The cottage can accommodate up to eight people with three bedrooms, a complete kitchen, washer-dryer, two full baths, air conditioning, an outside grill, and picnic table. Call us today for rates and information at 1-800-824-FISH. WYLN TV 35 has strong ties to the community as evident in its commitment to important causes like the American Cancer Society and Helping Hand Society Tilt Funds. WYLN's commitment to Northeastern Pennsylvania continues with a broadcast of Hazelton's Fundfest Parade and both Christmas and St. Patrick's Day Parades in Wilkesbury. In the summer, we broadcast the Weatherly and Giants of Spare Hill Climb. And throughout the year, we provide important community services through the broadcast of town meetings, school board meetings, election night coverage, and other events. WYLN, we're your local event. We got some snow to talk about in our forecast as we head into tomorrow and there was some light snow and snow showers across parts of our viewing area earlier today enough to pretty much whiten up the ground really not cause many problems out there now as we go into tomorrow we'll be looking at a little bit more snow than the places that saw the snow today so could be some slick spots out there especially as we progress to the afternoon and evening hours on our Wednesday. We'll get to more of that in a little bit, but you know what? Not that bad of a day across our area because most areas didn't see the snow, but primarily south of Interstate 80 seeing some of that light snow not causing too much of a problem out there. But then tomorrow, that's going to be a little bit of a different story because we may have enough snow to maybe do some shoveling or maybe even a little bit of some uh, plowing out there in some locations. The precipitation that we're going to deal with tomorrow has been out toward the west today, and eventually that's going to spread its way from west toward the east. Live 35 Skycast Doppler, nothing to show you from Wilkesbury through Scranton, Berwick, Bloomsburg, Drums, Jetto, Harley, Danville, Williamsport, all points at this time continuing to remain dry. Live 35 conditions outside 23 degrees but notice you know most of the times the wind has not been too much of a factor occasionally you get a uh, wind coming in five to seven miles per hour but other than that not too bad but it only takes a little bit of a wind to make it feel colder than what the actual area temperature indicates and it does feel like it's about 15 when you walk outside so low temperatures this morning generally bottomed out into the 20s for the most part high temperatures generally getting up into the 30s most areas getting above freezing with the exception of the higher elevations. 28 now in New England Gold, 24 degrees in Berwick, 26 in Bloomsburg, 28 in Monoy City, and 27 degrees in Danville. Satellites and radar. Well, here comes the next system that will be coming into play. It's going to come from west toward the east, and we're going to start to see some of that precipitation overspreading our area. There you can see it coming in tomorrow. Uh, most of our area will start to see some of that uh, snow and light snow falling by the early afternoon hours. I think it should be snowing in most areas by about 2 o'clock in the afternoon or so. And then we'll have to deal with that as we head through the late afternoon and evening hours. And then finally, this system will pull away. But again, it's, it's kind of similar to an Alberta Clipper system. It's not going to last very long. It's not packing much of a punch. In general, we'll probably see anywhere between one to two inches, maybe some isolated locations seeing as much as three. And there will be even some areas that could see under an inch. But just keep in mind, you still see the snow this time of year. It's still cold out there. It'll be cold tomorrow. Still could lead to some uh, problems and a couple of slick spots out there. So be careful if you have to do any type of traveling uh, tomorrow. I think tomorrow morning, 
should be in pretty good shape. Here's a look at the numbers. Teens tonight, tomorrow, temperatures getting up into the upper 20s and lower 30s. And as we progress through our Thursday, notice at about the uh, noontime hour, we should be up to near freezing. Precipitation amounts, uh, we're going to show you them more on a, a local level a little bit later on. Generally, anywhere from about an inch to maybe two inches or so. That pretty much is about it. We'll have that snow coming through as we head into uh, tomorrow, especially by the afternoon hours and evening hours. Like I said, the morning hours, I think uh, we'll be in good shape. It won't be snowing. So probably the majority of the schools will be able to start to have their classes. But yeah, maybe some early dismissals tomorrow, definitely not out of the question. Here, as we're up higher in elevations, we'll be about 27. Normally warmer locations will be near freezing. 30 degrees, a couple of snow showers for Thursday, cold for Friday, 27, and then some more snow showers as we start going into the weekend and as we head into early next week. Look how cold it's going to get. By Monday and Tuesday of next week, we're not going to get out of the lower 20s for daytime highs. Our evening Pennsylvania lottery numbers, the daily 581, the big four, 6159. The quintal number is looking like this, 81229. And a cash 5, 18, 19, 21, 25, and 40. We'll continue to have more late edition, including sports, with Eric, Bear, uh, uh, Eric D. after the break. All Care Home Care. The health care that you need in the comfort and privacy of your own home. At All Care Home Care, our caring and compassionate staff of skilled nurses, occupational speech, physical therapists, dietitian, social worker, and home health aides will give you the professional care you need. Call 459-3002. With All Care Home Care, you will feel so much better and be able to do so much more. Remember, it's still your choice for your care. Call us and we'll be there. Athletes try talking themselves out of being hurt. I'm good, I'm good. Working past the pain because they want to keep on playing. Okay. I'm good. Coordinated Health understands. As the number one sports medicine team in the region, we get these champions back in the game with pro-level care. Yeah, I'm good. Because we make you better together. At Cuck's Turkey Farm, we are family owned and operated for over 45 years and we consistently strive to produce premium poultry. We offer the finest all natural country poultry, antibiotic free, all vegetarian fed with superior white meat yield and exceptional flavor. So we invite you to experience the unique natural taste of our poultry for your enjoyment and your health. Give us a call or stop in today. This week on Women Today, it's the season six premiere. Maria Fendrick from Mother's Nature and Natural Markets can tell you how you can eat clean and healthy in 2015. We're going to taste a wonderful wine from Simply Homebrew. Kathy Kutchie's back in the kitchen. She's going to give you some great food pairings to go with that wine. Later on, we've got a fantastic giveaway, and we'll tell you who is our sensational senior of the week. That's all coming up. It's season six of Women Today. Join us. Enjoy the great outdoors at the Whitetail Preserve Shooting Ranges Trap, Skeet, and Sporting Clays course. No waiting and no lines. First time shooting? Whitetail Preserve employs certified instructors to help you get the most out of your experience. Hungry? The restaurant at Whitetail has a great menu to satisfy and offers catering for all occasions. Whitetail Preserve Shooting Range, approximately 13 miles west of Hazleton and just one hour from Allentown, Redding, and the Delaware Water Gap. 118 Boulevard Road, just off the Rockland Road, near Rockland, 384-2314. WILN TV 35, first in live sports. Join Marty Burns, Joe Melfi, and the entire WILN sports team as we bring you the best in live local sports. WILN TV 35, the event, not just the highlights. Winter Sports on WILN is brought to you by Lehigh Valley Health Network, Express Care, located in the Hazleton Shopping Center. There are 
are eight schools in Division I of the Wyoming Valley Conference, and entering tonight, teams had faced all but one division foe. The last of the first-time meetings as we go inside McGee and Gymnasium, with Hazleton hosting Berwick. Cougars posting a perfect 8-0 record at home this season. Bulldogs just 5-8 for the year. Here, it's the Dogs. With the give and go, Dion Harris gets it off and in. Next, Chris Panzarella inside the Bobby Planudis muscles and connects off the glass, putting Hazleton up nine. Then it's more from Harris. The three rattles home, bringing Berwick within five. But they can't defend Planudis. He gets free and finishes. Cougars lead 29-19 at the half and win by a 12-point margin, 62-50. to Planudis finishes with 18. More from the Wyoming Valley Conference and a big-time atmosphere for Nanticoke hosting Hanover. First quarter action, and it'll be the Hawkeyes that strike first. Bob Crestus straight away and knocks down the long two-ball. But Nanticoke swapping baskets early. Scott Stout open in the corner for the triple. Three to two Trojans. Back down the floor comes Nanticoke. Brent Piankowski under and around and the touch for the pair. But it's the Hawkeyes on a six to nothing run when the ball gets tipped out to Tony Marsenkiewicz. He thinks about it and thinks correctly. The big man drills it, holds up the three fingers just to remind everyone. Not enough though as Nanticoke gets the home win 48 to 43 over Hanover. Hazleton area senior Chris Panzarella had a busy day. He played a role in Hazleton's win over Berwick, and just a few hours before game time, the dual sport athlete signed a letter of intent to play baseball at Lackawanna College. I really like the coaching side. I love how the, the head coach pushes everybody. I love they, they're just known for a great program, and I really liked it there. I met pretty much all the guys, and they're they're all very nice. I mean, they work very hard. They dedicate themselves every day. They're always doing something to help themselves get better. So it's just a great environment up there. Noticed uh, the ability that he had, um, and we noticed that in our program he was the type of kid we wanted, tough kid um, with the ability to move on to the next level. Um, and it's tough to. Find a good shortstop, let alone a local kid. Chris has the ability right now to step in and play for us just with his ability. And I think that's more or less what we're looking for for him next year. Panzarella hopes to play Division I baseball after two years at Lackawanna. Later in sports, hear from Panzarella on the state of the Hazleton basketball team in our power rankings. But next, and we'll be back with a recap of today's news. <laughs> forget it. One minute, we are talking about going to the movies, and the next, Maggie could barely speak. It was a stroke. I thought I was going to lose her. But I never saw doctors work so fast. Anyway, she's coming home tomorrow. I just hope she doesn't yell at me for killing all the plants. <laughs> Tune in each week to WYLN TV 35 to watch the number one Hazleton-based broadcast and television talk show, The Storm, hosted by Tiffany Cloud. Candidates, politicians, community leaders, and more appear on The Storm when they want to be heard. New shows air Wednesdays at 8 p.m. and these additional air times. Only on WYLN TV 35, we're your local network. If you haven't found the perfect fishing getaway, you haven't been to Captain's Cove. Located on Henderson Harbor in upstate New York, Captain's Cove offers a variety of accommodations to please just about anyone. The motel, also located on the harbor, offers a magnificent view. Enjoy free morning coffee, air-conditioned rooms, cable TV, and HBO. The cottage can accommodate up to eight people with three bedrooms, a complete kitchen, washer-dryer, two full baths, air conditioning, an outside grill, and picnic table. Call us today for rates and information at 1-800-824-FISH. I'm Tiffany Cloud, host of The Storm. This week we have an exclusive first look at some interior building renovations being made in downtown Hazleton. Neil D'Angelo III takes us on a special sneak peek of the construction and provides updates about the activity happening downtown. It's only on The Storm this week, WYLN TV 35.
Pennsylvania has a new governor. Governor Tom Wolf took the oath of office and got to work right away as the 47th governor. WYLN lead reporter Gary Perna and chief videographer Mike Lula were in Harrisburg today and have a recap of the day's events. Today, Tom Wolf took the oath of office to become Pennsylvania's 47th governor. Wolf, a Democrat, beat incumbent Tom Corbett in the November general election. In front of his family, friends, cabinet heads, and distinguished guests, along with the entire state watching, Wolf pledged to uphold the Constitution. I, Thomas Westerman Wolf. I, Thomas Westerman Wolf. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support, obey, and defend. That I will support, obey, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of this Commonwealth. And the Constitution of this Commonwealth. Will started his speech by thanking Governor Tom Corbett. I want to start by thanking Governor Tom Corbett for his many years of service to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Please join me. The new governor made it very clear that both parties must work together. Republicans hold the majority in both the House and the Senate. We cannot take lightly the great history of democracy of which we are a part and encouraging, as he said that, all members of the legislature to meet with people across the aisle. That's important. Senators John Gordner and Dave Argel agree with that statement. Uh, well, so far, uh, Governor Wolf has said what he's needed to say. Uh, he's attempted very hard to reach out to both the House leadership and the Senate leadership. Uh, he wanted them to sit together in a bipartisan way. We, we did that on the Senate side and on the House side. Uh, he talked during the speech about working together. Uh, one of the things that I uh, noticed he said was that uh, all ideas should be considered, mm -hmm. and I think that's always important. So while uh, the governor has his ideas, we will have ours as well, and as long as all of them are considered, uh, hopefully it will be productive. It's going to be an interesting challenge. We have more Republicans in the House and Senate than in any time in, I think, more than 50 years, so more than my lifetime. And so uh, we need to work with the new governor. He needs to work with us. And so it's, a, it's an interesting dilemma, if you will, but I'm hopeful that we can, we can find a way to work together. Senator John Udichik believes now more than ever bipartisanship measures must be taken. Uh, we do have divided government. Uh, Republicans control the General Assembly. The governor controls, uh, the, the Democrats control uh, the governor's mansion. That means we have to work together. That's the most important message I heard today. Bipartisan in nature, bipartisan policy, build consensus, forge compromise, and invest in children, invest in education, invest in new jobs. Uh, so I'm very proud to be part of this day. In Wolf's speech, he told the public that he will be an unconventional governor, and it is time for Pennsylvania to work together and to make Pennsylvanians proud of this state. Remember who we are. Like you, I have been proud to be many things in my life. But above all, I'm proud to be a Pennsylvanian. Proud I was born here, proud I was raised here, proud that I call this state my home. And that's why I want to restore the belief that Pennsylvania is not just another place, not just another state. Pennsylvania is something bigger. It is something much better. It's an idea. Pennsylvania is an idea that all things are possible. It's that idea that brought William Penn here and allowed him to establish a colony built on a foundation unique in the world at that time of tolerance and inclusion. Governor Wolf laid out three primary goals. But I want you to know that for the next four years, my administration will be dedicated to three simple things. First, jobs that pay. Second, schools that teach. And third, a government that works. After the speeches, WYLN spoke with some that were in attendance and asked them their thoughts on the speech. I thought it was great. I think he kicked on the points he talked about in the election, and I just hope he uh, follows through with it. I thought it was a great speech. He was short. It was to the point. He laid it out, and now he's just got to follow through. I thought he was terrific. Well, I, I think that uh, Governor Wolf sp spoke from the heart. 
He uh, wasn't a fancy uh, speech, wasn't a fist-pounding speech, but he talked about the future of Pennsylvania, his commitment to making this a better place, not just for the wealthy, uh, the educated, for everyone. He wants to give everyone, as he said, a fair chance, an equal chance from, from every uh, part of the state, every ethnic and, and uh, uh, racial and sexual group. So I'm, I'm encouraged because what we need to do here in Pennsylvania right now is to bring people together. We've been uh, torn apart uh, through partisanship, in some cases geographic uh, differences, and I think he's going to bring us together. Pennsylvania's 47th governor was sworn in today here on the steps of the Capitol. Governor Wolf said three priorities for his next four years. One, being schooling. Two, being jobs. And the third, a government that works for the people. Today, Wolf said all three will go into play today, and he will take those three and make sure that they go well into his four years. In Harrisburg, at the Capitol, for W Island's Lead Edition, I'm Gary Perna. Thank you, Gary. An early morning fire in one part of Schuylkill County has been ruled accidental. Firefighters in Monterey City say the second alarm fire began around 3.30 Tuesday morning, according to firefighters. The homeowner woke up to a smoke alarms. Neighbors rescued the man from his roof. The home received significant smoke, fire, and water damage as a result of that fire. Pennsylvania State, State Police Fire Marshal John Burns says the fire began in the rear of the home in the kitchen pantry and ruled the fire accidentally in nature as a result of an electrical issue. One firefighter received minor injuries but did not seek medical attention. No other injuries were reported in this early morning fire in Monterey City. A Monterey City man was held up by knife point last night. Police responded to Main Street in the borough where a male victim was robbed of $42 in cash. Shortly afterwards, 22-year-old Corey Wall of Monterey City was taken into custody. He was charged with robbery, terroristic threats, aggravated assault, theft, receiving stolen property, and possessing an instrument of crime. Kelly Kazmarczyk was also arrested after the incident. She was charged with hindering apprehension, obstruction of law, and possession of drug paraphernalia. A four-car accident on 17th and Church Streets in Hazleton caused some major delays for many drivers. Hazleton City Police, along with the fire department, were on scene this afternoon around 3 o'clock when the accident occurred. There was only one injury reported, however, the extent of those injuries were not provided at the scene. Police arrested the driver of the Chevy Avalanche for suspicion of driving under the influence of a controlled substance. All four cars were towed from the scene. Firefighters directed traffic as the police conducted interviews. The portion of Church Street was closed, was closed and was open roughly one hour after the accident. An item that was not on the agenda at tonight's Hazleton City Council meeting made some major waves. Our Gary Perna was at tonight's meeting and has more. Council members on authority boards was a major discussion at tonight's Hazleton City Council meeting. Members from the audience that included a past council member and a past water authority member questioned council members on why they appointed fellow council members to sit on those boards. I think that the two appointments to those boards were great appointments. I think they'll do well. I think they care about the city. Uh, we did not... You know, we had nothing to do with uh, changing the third class city code allowing council people to be on boards. Uh, I'm not totally 100% for it anyway, but uh, if councilmen want to be on the boards, I know there's, you know, there's a lot of work there. I know I, I have enough to handle on council, but I know Dave is dedicated. He went to the meetings. He cares about uh, the water authority. You know, he's had 10 years of experience, and it's good to have people there with 10 years of experience. Also at the meeting tonight, Council President Jack Mundy mentioned that tomorrow, he and Mayor Joe Yanuzzi will head to Harrisburg to meet with a judge to talk about the Illegal Immigration Relief Act litigation. I'm going to Harrisburg to, uh, to uh, uh, it's a conference with uh, the magistrate, a federal magistrate, a mediator, to talk about uh, a settlement with the immigration. And you and the mayor are going after the city? I think it's me and the mayor. I don't know if Bob's going along. I was going to ask him. It would be nice to have an attorney there, but uh, so far me and the mayor are going down to Harrisburg, and it'll be uh, Chris Kobach's. We're picking Chris Kobach up at the airport. He's our solicitor who, who, who worked on the 
illegal immigration. He's the secretary of the state for Kansas, and he was our lead attorney. You know, they want they want their attorney's fees uh, paid, and uh, we we haven't been awarded. The judge hasn't awarded any money to them, but it's a possibility that that could happen. At the meeting, council voted on its schedule for 2015. Their meetings will be held the first and third Tuesday of the month. The next meeting will be held February 3rd, beginning at 7 p.m. In Hazleton, for WYLN's Late Edition, I'm Gary Perna. A Wilkes-Barre man was hit by a car while riding his bike along Cole Street. The accident happened around 8.30 p.m. on Monday evening in front of the Sherman Hills apartment complex. Police said that the man was hit by a dark-colored Pontiac, which then fled the scene. The victim was checked by emergency responders, then released. The hit-and-run is currently under investigation. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Wilkes-Barre City Police Department at 570-208-4207. On Monday, Misty Machinchok of Park Avenue in Wilkesbury pled guilty of coaxing her husband Gary Machinchok into raping a 15-year-old girl because she was unable to have a child on sex charges in Luzerne County Court. 33-year-old Machinchok pled guilty to charges of rape, aggravated indecent assault, endangering welfare of children, simple assault, corruption of minors, and criminal conspiracy charges. Luzerne County Judge David Loop has presided over the case. Misty's husband, 29-year-old Gary Machinchok, says his wife guilted him into repeatedly raping the child in an attempt to impregnate her so the couple could adopt their child and raise the baby as their own. Gary pleaded no contest to similar charges. He also pleaded no contest to indecent assault of a person under the age of 13 in connection with molesting the 15-year-old's 12-year-old sister, something he allegedly said he would do if the 15-year-old did not comply. Misty will now have to register for life as a sex offender. Gary is currently awaiting sentencing. And that is a look at tonight's top stories. Coming up next, Eric is back with more sports here on Late Edition. And how much snow can we expect for tomorrow? For all that and more, let's head outside to the Bedrock Gardens Weather Center with Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbache. Joe? That's right, Anne. We do have some snow that will start to head in our direction as we progress through tomorrow. Now just a couple of flurries out there. Not much going on. Well, back in 1961, it was known as the Kennedy Inaugural Storm because as you know, and look at that graphic, boy, it produced a pretty decent amount of snow on that particular day. Uh, many locations receiving over a foot, foot and a half of snow as that system took its track toward the south. We got some snow to talk about in our forecast coming here tomorrow. I'll let you know how much we'll see coming up in just a few. changing times. Is your insurance program up to date? I'm local real estate agent Gary McNeilis. I invite you to come into our office or give us a call. We'll help you be sure that you have the proper coverage to take care of all your family's needs at a price you can afford. Now more than ever, you need to be in good hands to protect everything that's important to you. Our team of insurance professionals and I will be honored to serve you. Are you in good hands? S.J. Kowalski is your Mitsubishi Diamond Contractor. They can install a Mitsubishi Electric, Mr. Slim Ductless Heating and Cooling System. Mr. Slim Systems are designed to make any living space in your home inviting. You can have a different temperature control for every room in your home. The money-saving technology can save you 25 to 50 percent on your heating bill. For Mitsubishi, Renai, and trained comfort specialists, call S.J. Kowalski at 570-455-2600. Dennis, this week on Wellness to Physical Therapy, Tim's going to tell us about neuropathy. This is a condition that affects a large number of people, yep. a lot of seniors, yep. and it's something that's very difficult to treat. Tim is going to give you a natural, non-invasive option this on Wellness to Physical Therapy. Tim's.
Base Luncheonette, still making memories after all these years. High school basketball rolls on, and while some schools have retreated to the middle of the pack, there are a few that just keep rolling. Here's your weekly look at the top five boys teams in our prep power rankings. GAR is out after a three-point loss to Hanover on Friday, which also puts the Hawkeyes right on the cusp. Into the rankings, for the first time this season, Mahanoy area, the Golden Bears, are unbeaten in the Skooka League and are playing their best basketball with playoffs less than a month away. The number four spot belongs to Crestwood. The Comets barely escaped Wyoming Valley West with a two-point victory, but the senior presence of Cole Wasco and Jason Dotzel means that this team can compete with anyone in the Wyoming Valley Conference. Tamaqua comes in at number three. The Blue Raiders have rolled off some solid wins since the loss to Pottsville a few weeks ago and I a rematch next Tuesday against the Crimson Tide. Number two, Hazleton. The Cougars are winners of eight straight, now nine straight after tonight, after a three and two start, leading them to a perfect conference record and the number 62 spot in the state rankings while getting contributions from it's all over the I think that makes us such a great team because anybody could do anything on any given night. Dante, Biazzi, Bobby, Shane, Zach, Makuda, anybody. That's why I think we're such a great team. Pottsville keeps a firm grip on the top position. The Crimson Tide have won their past five contests by an average of 44 points per game. And they are ranked as the 14th best team in the state of Pennsylvania. The Hazleton girls had to replace several top swimmers from last year's team, but that isn't stopping the Lady Cougars from maintaining high expectations for this season. We lost a lot of girls, so I think that with what we have, we're doing really well. We all have to step up then, since everybody graduated, we all have to step up and, you know, try to fill their places and shoes and try to swim faster times so we can win games. I definitely love to make states, and um, as a team, I think we're going to do really well this year. We're all really close, and all the girls are doing really well, especially the newer ones. Today, though, the girls lost to unbeaten Wyoming Valley West 107-73, nearly stealing a few events. However, last year's state qualifier Felicia Grego continued to shine, capturing first in the 100 freestyle as she strives to finish even better than last year. I'm satisfied with my times. I've been be doing really consistent um, good times in my 105, so I'm pretty excited to see what district has to come boys also fell to the Spartans by a 121-54 margin. The boys and girls next meet this Thursday at Dallas. Know the pros. Another day and more rumored links of the Eagles' interest in Heisman Trophy winner and Chip Kelly protege Marcus Mariota. They may be interested, but it will take a fortune to trade up to where the Oregon quarterback is being slotted. And new Jets head coach and defensive guru Todd Bowles has found the man to run his offense. Chan Gailey, named offensive coordinator, Gailey's most recent job was as the head coach of the Buffalo Bills and he was fired in 2012. We have results from Skooka League and Wyoming Valley Conference boys basketball, plus the cross-state rival matchup featuring the Penguins and Flyers in the scoreboards tonight. A reminder, Joe Garbacic is next with a look at your upcoming forecast. Saturday, January 24th, and Sunday, January 25th, the Bowl Arena in West Hazleton will be hosting the African Missions Project Bowling Telethon. Cost is $10 per person and includes two games of bowling and shoes. For more information, visit AfricanMP.org or call 570-459-3037.
Now Hazel Park Spring Water is proud to announce that they are the official water of the WYON Sports Crew and available for home delivery through JW Wargo Spring Water Delivery and JoJo's Beverage. Since 1915, the Chrysler family has been serving the area with quality meats. The tradition continues today with five generations at Hazel Park Quality Meats, 260 Washington Avenue, West Hazleton, and Reading Specialty Meats, located at 216 East 4th Street in Berwick. This is Staff Sergeant Eric Olson, and on the next Warrior Summit Outdoors, I take over 20 veterans on the deer hunt of a lifetime, a property hunted for the first time in 15 years. That's right, 15 years. But don't worry, kids, none of Santa's reindeer were there. Well, and after we harvested some huge bucks, we cooked up the harvest and enjoyed a holiday feast with veterans and family while we reflected on being home for the holidays and sharing the importance of supporting our homeless veterans. That's all on the next Warrior Summit Outdoors. Wouldn't it be great if everything in life were fast? Fast like a cable modem. Call Service Electric now and get the fastest internet in town. Plus, when you sign up today, you'll also get free installation. Experience the blazing speed of Service Electric high-speed internet service. Your internet will never be the same. Right now we're quiet throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Live 35 Skycast Doppler not showing anything. There's been a couple of flurries here and there, but other than that, we're in pretty good shape as we head through the overnight hours. We're not going to have to worry about any precipitation. And as we head into tomorrow morning for northeastern Pennsylvania, we're going to stay on the uh, dry side of things. It won't be until late morning and as we progress through the afternoon hours that we'll start to see some of that snow overspreading our area. So uh, I think for the most part the schools will be underway tomorrow morning but could be a couple of early dismissals out there tomorrow 21 degrees are live Lehigh tire conditions outside our station in Hazleton winds really not too much of a factor out there got some cold air across the uh, north look at Buffalo it's only coming in with 50 degrees but just toward the south it's uh, 50 degrees in Raleigh and 14 I should say in uh, Buffalo and in the 70s in Miami Florida 22 in Mount Pocono 26 Wilkes-Barre Scranton International Airport 28 in Williamsport and 28 degrees in State College up in the Wyoming Valley area from Nanticoke through Wilkes-Barre Kingston and Lehman, your temperatures generally holding in the 20s. Satellite and radar, again, all is quiet across the northeast. The breaks in the clouds, but those clouds will be on the increase as we progress through uh, tomorrow morning. And then notice, mid to late morning hours, central Pennsylvania making its way toward the east by the afternoon hours. And then it continues to snow a little bit, fairly light as we go into later tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. And then finally, it departs. How much are we going to see? Well, not a whole heck of a lot. <laughs> Let's go back to that graphic and see how much we will see. Uh, as we put that in motion, you'll be able to see for yourself that, again, a, a widespread one to maybe two inches of snow, I think that pretty much is about it. Maybe some locations could see a little bit more than two, and there could be some areas that could see a little bit less than one. So again, uh, it could create some slick spots tomorrow, especially tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening, but I'm not expecting a, a lot of major problems out there on the highways as uh, they will be treated. And there will be some areas tomorrow that will be near freezing. So we got the snow to deal with, then it moves out of here, and then it's kind of quiet as we go into our Thursday on the extended forecast. Here's what it's looking like. About 30 degrees, a few snow showers and flurries around for our Thursday, Friday about 27, then we're in the lower 30s for Saturday and Sunday. A couple of snow showers around and then, boy, it gets very cold. As we start going into early next week, Monday and Tuesday, we're only going to be in the lower 20s for daytime highs. And some of those overnight lows hovering about 10. We may be looking at uh, temperatures even in the uh, single digits. So it just looks like winter. Not too much. Yeah, we have to deal it's with something it. Something that a lot of us are used to. So if it's not going to be uh, too much out there, but still, be safe on the roads, of course. Yeah, take your time. All right, all right. Nice signing today. 
yes. uh, local kids uh, getting the chance. And, I mean, so he plays uh, basketball. He had a basketball game tonight. A couple <laughs> hours before that, he's signing his letter of intent to play baseball at Lackawanna College. So a busy day for Chris Panzarella, but that's what I've learned with these high school athletes. They, they do a little bit of everything. All right. Well, congratulations go out to him, of course. And, and for all of our top stories of the day, including um, Governor Wolf's swearing-in ceremony from our Gary Perna and Mike Lula, who were out there all day long. So we want to thank them for that, of course. And it is on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash WYLN, late edition, news at 10. There you can see all of our top stories of the day and any kind of breaking news that you may need to know about. We will see you back here tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.